in 1976, uh, I went back to Florida and I uh, went in as a baby face this time and I was Dusty's partner a couple of times. And I was pretty happy doing 1500 a week in Florida at that time was, was real good money. A lot of girls, a lot of parties, a lot working every night. It was, it was a lot of fun. But it's around this time that my dad had a plane crash with the one with Flair and everybody was in. And I was 76. And my dad was virtually crippled from the waist down. His career was, was over. And the pilot died and Flair continued to go on because he, Flair never always told everybody he had a broken back, but he never broke his back. How high up was, was that plane when it actually crashed? What was the story behind the plane crash? Well, they were going to Wilmington, North Carolina, and they used to do a lot of charter flights so they could get home that night instead of having to stay over there. So they flew from Charlotte to Wilmington. The story about it was the thing ran out of gas. So he tried to switch over to reserve. My dad was up in the front with the pilot and said he could smell gas. There was still gas in the plane, but he couldn't get the engines restarted. And it landed short of the runway but the bad part about it is it ran into a railroad embankment crosswise and it just come to a screeching halt. All the chairs in the, in the Cessna, all the seats and everything came loose, came forward, hit my dad and the pilot in the back. Pilot went through the, the, the window and my, my father broke both his hands hanging on to it, but he broke his back in like four different places. Really brutal. And, uh, so that's what happened there. So I'm I'm in Florida while this was happening, and I guess another year goes by, but they kept calling me and calling me, and, and I really didn't want to leave Florida. I liked it, but they say, "Hey man, what are you making down there?" I said, "Well, thousand fifteen hundred a week." I said, "Well, you can triple that if you come up here. I'll I'll put you right in here. I'll make you." Flair's partner and everything like that. So I finally, I, I went in there in, in uh, September of 76 into the mid Atlantic. Well, my dad did a hell of a rib and this is a legendary rib. This guy by the name of Jay York, I don't know if you heard of him, he used to wrestle as the Alaskan. And he did a lot of bit parts and movies out there. He like bald had a guy with a beard. Did, did a lot of stand-ins and stuff in, in Hollywood. Well, at the time, he was Jay York, the Alaskan, and he had an atomizer that he had to take for asthma, and he squirted in his mouth after, after he, before he went to ring and after he got back from the ring because he had trouble breathing. <laughs> so my dad, this is a classic one because everybody knows about this one, at least the boys, the older fellows, anyway. He goes out to the ring and wrestles, and my dad filled his uh, anonymizer up with lighter fluid. <laughs> so, so he comes back in from the ring, and he's, you know, how you are after you wrestle. You know. <sighs> and he goes for that anonymizer, and he goes, <clears throat> and he almost killed himself. You know, he <laughs> fell down, rolled around the floor. <laughs> So he goes out to his car. He knew exactly who did it, oh, Johnny man. Valentine. So he goes out to his car and grabs his shotgun. Oh. <laughs> Brings his shotgun in. Now, my dad had two wrestling bags in his hand. One was his bag, and there was a big metal Halliburton. And the other one was was Buddy Rogers' bag, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. So he's holding them like this, and he's standing in the hallway, and here comes Jay York with his <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> I know you did it, you son of a bitch. I know it. I'm going to take care of you right now. And he shot at him, but he aimed at right. Buddy Rogers' suitcase <laughs> and blew Buddy Rogers' suitcase <laughs> off his head. Awesome. <laughs> and my dad fell back like he thought he'd been shot, you know. That was a great room. <laughs>